Thank you for joining us at World to Come Ministries, where we will be looking at Bible readings, Bible studies, and looking forward to the world to come. Hello, welcome to World to Come Ministries. This is Andrew Fatch, and we would like you to join us on our continuation of our story of Elijah. So last video, we talked about he showed up, told the king Ahab there will be no rain, and guess what? There was not any rain. He uh, went by a brook where God fed him, sustained him, he went to a widow lady where she sustained him. God provided a miracle that her food stores and her oil store didn't run out. And he also provided Elijah to save her son. So now we are going to take a look at 1 Kings chapter 18. And we're going to start to see Elijah is going to go back to Ahab and tell him that it is going to rain. So, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go unto the land, unto all the founts of water, and unto all the brooks. Pre-adventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we not lose any of the beasts, or not all the beasts, not any. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. So they come together, they say, hey, we got a drought, a famine, we need to find a place for these horses. So Obadiah goes one way, Ahab goes the other. Well, here comes Obadiah. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, aren't thou the... That my Lord Elijah. And he answered, I am. Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. So he runs into Obadiah. Oh, Elijah says, hey, let your Lord, let the king Ahab know that I am back. And, you know, I want an audience. So, as we see, and uh, verse 8, and he answered him, go and tell the Lord, behold, Elijah is here. But in 9, and he said, what have I sinned that thou willest deliver my servant unto the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, and they found thee not. And now thy sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. When it was not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And now thy sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. 
So he comes, they have this terrific conversation, and he's like, you're going to get me killed, Elijah. I mean, Ahab has looked for you in all these lands. He has, you know, went after these people that are trying, thinking you're hiding you. He's looking for you. I'm going to tell him you're here. You're going to run away, and I'm going to die. I, I mean, I, I could see where Obadiah is coming from. I, I really can. So verse 15, And Elijah said, As the Lord of all hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab, and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Okay, so this is where it's going to get interesting, because Ahab and Elijah are not friends. The last time they met, Elijah said, there shall be no water, no dew, no rain in your land for, you know, till I say otherwise. And I'm pretty sure that that does not make them friends. Let's see what God says. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? That's a pretty harsh word. I mean, he, he accuses him of troubling Israel. Now, to me, I think this would be kind of a good answer for me. This is what... Elijah has to say, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. So he said, hey, I didn't forsake Israel. You followed Balaam. You forsake Israel. I just forsake you in your house. So verse 19, now therefore send and gather to me all Israel upon Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long hath ye been two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. So he went in front of the people and he said, Hey, you got to pick a side here. Are you going to pick God or are you going to pick Baal? If God is God, follow him. If Baal is Baal, follow Baal. Verse 22, Then Elijah unto the people, I even I only... Remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. So he laid down the gauntlet. He said, You and your God go build an altar, make a sacrifice. I'm going to have an altar. I'm going to have my sacrifice. And the first one to get eaten up and consumed by fire is the winner. Simple enough, right? Yeah, we'll see. Um, Verse 25, And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock, which was grouped them, and they dressed it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leapt unto the altar which was made. So they're trying. 
They're calling out his name. They're leaping on the altar. They are trying to get him to bring fire. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or he sleepeth and must be awakened. Okay, so Elijah decides that not, he's going to have a little fun with them. He's going to mock them and be like, hey, your God sleep. Wake him up. And verse 28, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any answer nor any that regardeth. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And that, I like that, because Elijah repaired the Lord's offer, altar. He did not create his own or, you know, do anything. It was already the Lord's altar. He just gave it back to him. And, and I like that. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock into pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it. The second time, and they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time, and they did it a third time. And water ran about the altar and filled the trench also with water. So, Baal and their prophets sat there. They built their sacrifice. They put it on the altar. They didn't use water. Baal, Baal didn't do it. Elijah says, I'm going to make this a clear sign from the Lord. I want you to build it. I want you to put stones around it. And I want you to put three times the amount of water so it fills this trench. So when the fire does come, it's not gonna it's not gonna be by my hand. It is gonna be the act of the Lord. So, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God, Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known to this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. And then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And he took him, and Elijah brought them down to the brook, Kishon, and slew them there. I mean, that's amazing. Okay, God, he called on the name of the Lord. It wasn't under Elijah's power. It was not Elijah that did it. It was the Lord. He called on the Lord, and the Lord took everything like it wasn't even there i mean that that would have to be an amazing fire i've seen apartment fires and house fires and there's still things there 
at the end of the fire, but there was nothing that remained. So, not only that, but Elijah said, take all the prophets of Baal. And Elijah took them to the brook and slew 450 prophets of Baal. That is an amazing, amazing feat. Verse 41, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stops thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezebel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So, I mean, they have rain? God worked an amazing work. And join us next time where we're going to look at what happens to Elijah after this. Thank you for joining us.